Midjourney started testing V5, their new image model, or at least a version of it, and it is amazing. We're finally getting photorealistic hands, Lego figurines are coming out basically perfect, and a lot of other cool stuff. But it's a little more difficult to use. There's a little more to keep in mind with it. So we're going to cover it in today's episode of Analog Dreams. I'm Addy. Welcome back to Midjourney AI Image Generation. If you're new to Midjourney, which is an AI image generator or Discord, the video and chat tool that they use to generate images. I have a whole beginner's course linked in the description below, a whole full playlist of videos where you can get up and running with it. This is for people who are already used to using it a little bit, who want to know about this new V5, or I got a question, couple questions about what V4, V3, V5, any of that means in the first place. So Midjourney is its own separate kind of organization running their own research program with these AI art generators, and thus they are making their own revisions over time with different versions as they improve things. And one of the ways that they improve their image models is by effectively training it on itself. And so through Midjourney's website, you have an option to rate and give feedback on specific images on whether they came out right in the first place, on whether the upscaling model did a great job, things like that. And they use that data to further train and refine their image model. And so if you go back to generate an image in V1 versus V4 and V5 now, it is night and day how different and how much better the image models have improved. This is one thing that Midjourney is doing better than what you can get with something like Stable Diffusion without a lot of work or a lot of custom models, is they are doing all of this work to train it up themselves. V5 is the newest model that they have been working on for the past six to nine months, I believe. They've been training their, you know, their, their server hosting and all of that to refine this model. However, there is going to effectively be two versions of V5. The one we're testing right now is more of a pro or kind of what I would consider a raw model. Like you take you take a picture, this is a film camera, pretend that's a digital camera, but you take a picture with a modern digital camera, you can take the raw image or the JPEG image. With the JPEG image, same thing with video, you have a preset kind of look and color applied, whereas with the raw image, you kind of got to do a lot more to coax it and to get what you want from there. That is what they're trying to do with V5. So with V5 right now, it is what they're calling less opinionated, which just means that it takes a lot more literal interpretation of the prompts that you give it, which can make it more difficult to use because you got to be way more descriptive, way more verbose. You can't play around with just like, like with early versions of Midjourney, a lot of us played around with like lyrics or random quotes or like ponderings and we'd get some wacky results out of it just based on random words and the AI kind of trying to figure out what all of that meant. With V5, it is you have to be very descriptive and use a lot more words in your prompts. But they do plan on training up a more stylized version of V5 that performs like the other ones uh, that you can then switch between if you want like the pro mode versus the beginner mode or the, the stylized mode versus the flat mode or something like that. And so they are working on that. But we are looking at V5 today. V5 in this current version uh, outputs a 2x resolution increase over V4, which means it produces twice the size, which means currently there is no upscaler. So instantly, if you choose like upscale image one, it'll just spit it back out to you, which is pretty cool. It supports tiling for seamless tiling for patterns and things like that, which is still experimental. It supports arbitrary aspect ratios again, so we can do crazy things like my posters project, or you can do wider things for cinematic shots. And image weighting is also back. Also, I just wanted to note, if you missed it, they are doing a physical magazine release, a, an AI zine, if you will, which is pretty cool. It's four bucks uh, to sign up and get you a copy. It looks like they're going to try to do it monthly for a little bit. I am super stoked for this. I love zines and physical media of all kinds, so I am stoked to check it out. But we're going to check out V5 here. We're going to take a quick little peek through the V5 showcase in their Discord server, where you can see some of some people's top images from it. And immediately, like, these images are just mind-blowing. Look at ah that is just wild you've got a lot more photorealistic people which is always improved upon with these like this these look like movie photos uh there's another there's a photographer that follows me and i follow him he makes other videos i follow him on instagram and he posted a bunch of pictures that i thought were photographs of people at a museum and it would turn out to be new mid journey v5 uh, this looks freaking sick you still got that weird like it's adding a bit of a zombie effect to her forehead but it's still there it almost looks like a fusion of Pedro Pascal and like some 80s action hero. You can get some wild stuff and it's better at hand. So I've done some demo images here as I've tried to like 
feel out what it can do and what it can't do. Something you will notice is that your prompts from previous generations may not actually change much. With going from say V3 to V4 or V2 to V3, a lot of people were doing their same prompts in each you know version of Mid Journey and they would end up with drastically different results and it was pretty cool to see. I ran a lot of my generations from the poster project, I'll have that video linked below, where I was generating posters with Mid Journey and just rerunning it with dash dash v5. So to use any version of mid journey, you can do slash settings and you have this little settings window, hit enter, and then you can choose the default mid journey version that you use. So by default, you're gonna be on version four until I finish up version five. I have selected v5. You can also just do at the end of your command dash dash v space the number and so I was using dash dash v4, and whatever you add here should override whatever is in your settings. However, you could just click that and turn that off. Well, typically, it doesn't always want to take, but you can... There we go. Now I have... The default is v4, so if you set it to something other than the default, it's going to do dash dash v5 or v3 or whatever, or the default is v4 and you have to delete that action. But it's dash dash v space the number is the flag that you use. And so a lot of people typically have generated their early generations through V5 or through V4 from V3 or whatever and got much better results. I tried doing this and honestly didn't get much better. I was kind of disappointed, but also it's because of the fact that currently with V5, it needs to be a lot more descriptive. So like something abstract like this, like this looks basically the same as it did in V4. I tried using with Niji Journey, the anime version of Mid Journey, which has all the same updates and everything. Uh, this prompt to get kind of like a, a pop fashion version of Medusa. I still didn't really get what I wanted. Still had some artifacts. Wireframe symbols idea I had actually came out better. We will scroll down and get to that in a moment. But for the most part, like everything I was trying to generate was marginally better than V4, if any different at all, really. Because it you, you gotta really start tweaking your prompts to get something better. This was the closest I could get with like wireframe looking symbols and images though, out of V5 or out of any of the versions, uh, which was a nice improvement to see. But you're not gonna see radically different results from your existing uh, generations. Now I started, I'm working on a photo animation project. And so I was trying to get one of these umbrella in a you know rainy Tokyo street thing going and I feel like it's doing a lot better job with this concept than it has done in previous versions and I'll show some of my example animations when I was still learning back over the summer of last year how those looked artistically and we're getting further and further away from the like sketchy painterly mid journey style that everyone associated with mid journey for so long because that's it just kind of fudged all the details to something that kind of looks like 3d rendered or like a photo now obviously with this one it's supposed to be a back silhouette and yet it's trying to show the arm and the umbrella through the back, but I can just paint over this effectively and fix that up, either using in painting with Dolly or Stable Diffusion or whatever, or just going in Photoshop with the black and just turning this more into a silhouette and it'll look fine. Um, that one looks a lot better overall without needing to do that. Same thing here though, the umbrella is showing on the back, so I gotta turn this more into a silhouette. But overall, that is looking phenomenal. And then I came over here and started generating some new ideas. I wanted to test hands. Everyone says hands are better. And for the most part, yes, I described hands holding a Canon DSLR camera, taking a photo, photorealistic, up close 35 mil photograph, hyper real, accurate hands, holding camera, close shot, cinematic lighting. And for the most part, especially compared to previous versions, this really looks like human hands. Now there are some little quirks uh, this one's almost perfect, and it even almost spelled canon perfectly there. I don't know what happened to the camera on this one, but the hands look mostly fine. That finger kind of fades out a little bit. This finger looks a little stubby, and then those kind of are bending in into a place on the camera where it doesn't exist, but the canon name is almost perfect. EOS is perfect. Like, that is almost a perfect image. And then over here, this is the only one out of all my images that have hands at all where we got a six-fingered hand. So, we are getting... Very close. Hands have just been one of those weird things that Mid Journey just can't easily get right, but they have been training and refining it, and that is one of the things they focus on. It's also doing a lot better at Lego people. So I described a Lego Master Chief, and it's not using the typical Lego person style, but rather use it, making them out of Lego parts, which is honestly fine for, you know, me just looking at this. It looks pretty cute. I love it. But if you do get it to make Lego looking people, like, it is getting near perfect photograph looking images. 
of LEGO people, which is wonderful. It's also doing great with like emulating photographs, basically. So I've got some band pictures here. Now this one I didn't specify how many people, so it started generating way too many people and arms kind of come out of nowhere. So still struggles a little bit there, but at a glance, these look like photographs. Like that's the thing is the details still need refined as always, but like these are starting to look more and more just like one-off photographs, which is insane. Uh, I took inspiration from someone on my Discord server for a couple of these, which is like an 80s, you know, big hair metal band holding cats. And every once in a while you get like three arms or something. But like, again, these look just like photos. It doesn't make any sense. Like this is a photograph. And these cats are adorable. That cat turned into a hand at the end of its paw. <laughs> but the like photorealistic styling is wild. This is Warhammer 40k Space Marines fighting in a Kmart parking lot in a black and white old wartimey photo look, which just looks wild. Slash imagine I want to do a live demo here. Cinema cinematic portrait of a young woman with blonde hair and pink highlights with blue eyes with freckles smiling towards the sky for tinder. <laughs> Selfie, 35 millimeter film, photograph, realistic, 8K, cinematic, lighting. Dash dash, aspect ratio, 2 by 3. V5. And I want to show you how fast the upscaling is because it's rendering the full image itself at twice the resolution so it doesn't need to upscale. And then you can still take it to your gigapixels, your photo AI, your... your chainer upscaling method or whatever to make it bigger photoshop whatever you want but it just generates them bigger in the first place now i do have quality set to two for most of my generations just by default so it takes a little longer but realistically it doesn't play a super serious role yeah i mean look at these these effectively photographs like you got some some blurring where it maybe shouldn't be and it really likes giving her these moles for some reason which i haven't seen in a lot of other people's but like, these are entirely believable photographs. Again, the, the pimples are maybe a little overdone. There it looks a little more natural. It's, try, it's turning freckles into pimples, I guess. But like, these are entirely believable, just like cinematic selfies that you could 100% use on social media or something and have a fake person. Like, catfishing is about to get wild. <laughs> I, I feel very bad for the people that are gonna fall for this kind of thing. I want to do a couple demos to show how less abstract Midjourney is getting with this version. So I put Hello Darkness, My Old Friend through version 1, 4, and 5. With version 1, version 1 and version 2, you tend to get these painterly abstract things that honestly surprisingly got close to the emotion of whatever abstract language you put into it. And that always like resonated with a lot of people. A lot of us were doing these kind of poetic things. And so that's why it's cool that Midjourney lets you use the different versions still because it's worth using them when you want to sometimes. Uh, but it, it, it's a very abstract thing. Whereas V4 is a lot, it, it's still abstract. Like that one is just profound looking. Like that is sick. I'm gonna upscale that one. The rest get into, I mean, they're kind of cool, but th they go weird places. Version five, I don't even know what it's referencing here. It's just doing like t-shirt designs or something and it's just like you're you're gonna struggle to get these more artistic and like wild looking images without being more descriptive out of it and i fired off one of the quotes that i used for one of my poster designs as well and this time i went with v2 because it's what i started with with mid journey so it's what i'm used to and it's as the day draws to a close and the shadows grow the stars start to twinkle in the night just to create this wonderful sight colorful has a typo in it doesn't have any commas whatever in version 2, you get this completely abstract night sky thing. In version 4, you still get this wonderfully abstract painterly looking image. I actually love this first one here and this fourth one here. Absolutely beautiful. But number 5, it's still trying to do the abstract thing, but it's very much focusing on the literalness of the night sky, the, the stars, and the colorful. Like, it, it is... It, it, I, I feel like I, I can't put it into words, but you can tell how as the Mid Journey team stated, it focuses so much more on 
the specific language, the, the descriptors that you use. It's very focused on night sky, colorful twinkle stars, and not trying to put a person in there, some thought, some whatever interpretation. Again, the second layer of V5 that is the more stylistic one that they're trying to implement alongside this version will ideally be able to use it, but it's just something to keep in mind for now if you're generating. I, I think that's a wonderful illustration of kind of the differences over the generations. Overall, Midjourney V5 is here. It is amazing that they're still iterating and moving so quickly, and we're going to quickly get to the point as we get more and more of these photorealistic images. There, there's this wonderful thread. If I can find it from Twitter, I will, I will screenshot it or link it in the description, talking about how as these AI tools continue to improve, we're going to quickly, like it's only been a year really since Midjourney has even been out. We're going to quickly get outsmarted by these tools in a sense of like the new iterations are going to be harder and harder to tell to the naked eye like you know once we get hands to a photorealistic enough sense the improvements may be there structurally and like from a back-end perspective but once they look good enough it's going to be harder and harder and harder to notice the differences which also means it's going to be harder and harder to harder to actually differentiate them from real life or from artistic intent or whatever and obviously again there's going to be plenty of reasons to still use the older versions as this version from one from version 4 i absolutely love and i want to keep same thing with these little poster ideas but things are moving very quickly and i just wanted to showcase what v5 can do i have a lot more cool art projects using mid-journey created stuff coming soon like my poster project and a lot of other cool stuff so get subscribed for that i just i am so excited for v5 that Ah, let me know what kind of stuff you want to see in the comments below. Let me know what kind of cool stuff you've seen or built with V5, either in the comments or tag me on social media with images or whatever. And most of all, remember to be kind. Rewind.